Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hujuana and today we're going over realistic navigational sensors, those vital systems that tell you where your ship is out in the big empty. The first method of determining your location is pure dead reckoning, keeping track of every movement your craft does, every burn time, every turn you make, and then plotting them down on a map. Using this history of your intended movement lets you figure out where your current position is if you knew where you started from. But the problem is, what you intended to do and what you actually did may not match up exactly. That's where inertial measurement units come in, tracking the turns and burns with accelerometers and gyroscopes. The problem with this fully internal system is that tiny errors in measurement with those devices accumulate over time, and over long distances this error can really build up. That's why these are best used in conjunction with a method using external reference points to cancel out the errors, like this periscopic sextant on the Apollo capsule. That's right, a sextant, just like those that sailors have used for many a year to figure out where they are out in the big blue, but just with more high-tech equipment. There's more historical precedent beyond Apollo too. Simple measurements of angles between stars and the Earth or the Moon were used to verify locations for Gemini and Skylab missions, and even old-school handheld ones have been tested on the International Space Station in preparation for future missions. Handheld ones are just so simple and easy to use. They're small, they require no power and only a bit of expertise. Even the periscopic ones like those found on the Apollo capsule or the B-52 aren't that much more complicated. Any sextant is a fantastic backup method to more advanced systems, as they cannot be jammed or blocked out. As long as you have a view of the sky, you can figure out where you are. Even on a larger scale, like flying through a solar system rather than just pootling about near the moon, you can measure the angles between the local star and its planets to math out your location relative to them. But those positions do change since the planets are all moving, so you need a moving map if you want to plan ahead to a planetary rendezvous months down the line, and a reliable method to keep time so you know when on that map you are. Apart from the timing thing, this is kind of the method that Gale used in the first season of Foundation, using her own knowledge of specific stars in a patch of space to figure out the unknown location of the ship she was on, as well as its heading and destination. And that brings us to star trackers. These are basically just cameras that point at stars, taking pictures of them and then comparing their locations to a star catalogue. Since the stars' locations in the sky have been locked down to a high degree of accuracy, the picture the tracker takes can be used to determine which way the camera, and therefore the spacecraft, is facing. There's also simpler versions that just track the sun, providing a single easy reference point for the spacecraft. At first glance, pattern matching star trackers may sound high tech, needing to match entire databases of stars to some patterns to figure out what's going on, but they've been used since the early Cold War on long range missiles. Since many of the intercontinental ballistic missiles of the time were aimed at predetermined targets, all they needed was the brightest stars that any particular missile was supposed to see on its route. Or rather, a whole set of those stars since the spin of the Earth means the stars above the flight path change. A similar system was used on the SR-71 to track out its route as it zipped through the skies. Simple stuff, but very clever. These days, there are much better options available using more modern technology, but the principle remains the same, and they've flown all throughout the solar system. But that there, the solar system, is the main weakness of the Star Tracker for sci-fi, as they only really work with high accuracy for a single solar system at a time. Different solar systems would have their own star patterns, by an amount that changes depending on how far apart the systems are. It's still doable though, you just need a map of patterns for that solar system way over on the other side of the galaxy if you want to navigate there using this method. The really sci-fi thing to do would be to combine the star tracker and the sextant with a database of every star, with its brightness, size and emission spectra to identify it, along with its relative position to other nearby stars. Essentially a very detailed 3D star map. or 4D I suppose since they do move around in the long term, which is what prevented Stargate Command from properly dialing anywhere but Abydos with their hacked together dialing computer. By using this stellar map you can track your location really anywhere, whether you're on the map or not, as long as you can see enough stars that you've catalogued to use as reference points. This is the system that Seven and Kim developed for the Astrogation Lab on Voyager, which used Borg know-how and 3 billion stars for absurd accuracy when plotting the ship's location against the galactic core. That's getting a bit away from the realism side of things though, but there is a specific type of star that is much rarer but stands out more, making them easier to track and use for navigation. The Pulsar. 
These are a type of rotating neutron star that shoots out beams of radiation from their magnetic poles. As the magnetic pole and rotational axis don't necessarily line up, these beams can sweep across the sky like lighthouses. To an observer looking down these beams, the star appears to pulse in brightness with very regular timing, ranging from minutes to milliseconds. And not just in visible light either, the beams contain lower and higher frequency waves of light too, most notably X-rays. Since every pulsar has a unique time signature, it's possible to track these flashes of X-rays and other light, and use them as fixed points across the galaxy, letting you triangulate your own position relative to the pulsars. Then if you know where they are, you know where you are. While such systems have not been used for this purpose just yet, there have been experimental efforts made towards them, including one called Sextant on the ISS. Pulsar X-ray nav systems have even been posited as being used in place of GPS due to being unjammable, despite much lower accuracy, on the order of kilometres rather than metres, but more on GPS in a moment. While they're not in use yet, pulsar navigation has been a concept almost since they were discovered. Back in the 70s, pulsar maps were placed on Pioneer 10, 11 and both Voyager spacecraft, displaying the time periods of 14 pulsars and their distances to the Sun, just in case someone picks those probes up deep into the future and wants to see where they originated. A similar map made by time-travelling Borg was shown in Star Trek Enterprise, sent off across the galaxy and seemingly forming a closed loop for how they got to Earth in the first place. A more localised navigational method is to use the Global Positioning System, or GPS. This is a satellite constellation operated by the United States, though the term has kind of become shorthand for all such satellite navigation systems, no matter their operator. What these satellites do is broadcast their individual locations and the exact same synchronised time. The receiver then does math and finds out its own position relative to this network thanks to the minute light speed time delay incurred by the different distances to each of the satellites it can see. I think GPS is a mind-bogglingly clever solution to providing location data, and it can be used by anything that can pick up the signal, including spacecraft above the satellites. So for things operating near an active GPS constant they have another method of figuring out where they are. Similar satellites could be placed all around the solar system as beacons, providing another set of reference points beyond the Sun, planets and other stars, though those other methods may render such a system unnecessary. The last navigation method is the simplest of them all, being told where you are by someone else using their sensors, tracking your signal or bouncing radar off your ship to see where you are. But those sensors and their combat applications are a topic for a future video. Subscribe to catch that next month. Beyond that, the best way to use all of these navigation systems is to combine them together, letting them build upon each other. This also helps to weed out errors in any particular method, such as those built up in inertial trackers. I hope this look at real space navigation was informative, and whether you use it for your own realistic or unrealistic creations, I hope you've been inspired. You can support Space Dock by joining our Patreon where you can get our Space Fighter design reference book. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by giving us super thanks or by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters, and thank you for watching.